Hello and welcome. This is a demo on how to use some of the more advanced features of the Subversive plugin to Eclipse. Uh, for the more basic features, you may want to check out a previous video uh, showing how to create, uh, check in, and check out repositories. Um, or projects, rather. So, picking up where we left off a little bit before from last day, we already have a SVN project. This happens to be an Eclipse, or an Android project. Uh, it doesn't have to be. It could be any type of project you like. And we can see here that I've got a basic Java file uh, with the onCreate and onCreate options uh, 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 methods. So what I want to do is I want to, first off, simulate having two developers working on this. Now normally what would happen is each developer, each team member has a working copy on their machine and they're, each developer is checking into the repository. Now of course I don't have that lecture at the moment, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two checkouts of the same project on this computer. Normally you wouldn't do that, but it at least allows me to simulate what's going on. So let me expand this. We can see I've got the SVN repositories here open up. I can refresh the list of repository or the list of projects that are inside of my repository that I set up. And what I'm working on is I'm working on the SVN demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, find or check out as it's going to allow me to change the name. And so I'm going to call this SVN demo, let's call this second. And it should go through and check out the entire project for me. So I'll go back here and I can see here I now have SVN repository second. And I'll bring this back over so we don't need that much space. Now what I'm going to do, this may get a little confusing but we'll work it through, I'm going to open up this same file. Let me take the second copy and drag it to the right side of my screen. So I now have this same file open in two different working copies. So the one on the left is my SVN demo here at the top, first project. The one on the right is from this second project. You can imagine that we've got two developers, one named Lefty, the other named Righty, and they're working on this uh, the same piece of code. So let's see what would happen. Let's go here and let's say Lefty makes a change. He's going to add a log message. I uh, will call this one, this is my SVN demo is the tag, and the message is first, uh, first log message. So we can see here the change is applied here on Lefty's copy. I'm going to check this in. So I right click on the project, and then I go down to team, and then commit up here at the top, and it's going to check in the update. And I'll say added initial log message. And click OK. Now it won't have done anything to write his copy because we've only made that one change. We have not yet updated. So down here I can update my second copy. I'm going to right click, go down team off the screen, but here we see update. So I'll say update, and like magic, the copy on the right updates to include everything we had on the left. So now we have these two are in sync. We can see the version numbers here is 53, and up here is also 53, which is fantastic. So we can demo the same sort of thing. I'm just going to uh, make a duplicate of this, and let's say log message in on create options. Just for completeness, we will check this in. So team commit uh, second uh, log message. And we can see here it's actually going to commit in this uh, cache as well. I don't really want that. It's in the bin folder, so I'll unclick it for the moment. Once that's finished committing, this will now be at version 54. Right here is 54. I've not yet updated, so I could update here if I wanted to. Team update, and now it's going to tell me the project maximum version number that I've got checked out is 54. I can do the same thing at the top here, right click, team, update, and lefty's copy is now going to update to 54. <clears throat> so what do we do? We changed in one, we up updated the other, and so forth. So that's the basic no conflict uh, change. Let's imagine that we have a bit more complicated situation. Let's add a few more changes here. <clears throat> so I'm going to add in another here. We'll call this second log message. And then in the righty's copy, I'm going to add in another change here. Let's call this another log message in on create. So each developer has made some changes to the code. 
neither one has each other's change at the moment. Let's imagine that the left hand beats it, so lefty beats in. Team and commit, so lefty commits, giving it a section, uh, a comment. So let's say duplicated log message in on create. Again, I always want to give it a reasonable comment. Now let's imagine that once this is finished, righty tries to check in, but doesn't do an update first. So we'll just do a commit. You usually want to update first. So I'll say my commit, and we're going to say uh, second message in on create options. And I'll click OK. Now this isn't going to work. Why? Because we're not at the head. Lefty checked in first. Lefty's now at version 55. We're based on version 54 which means that we're one version behind. We cannot check in when we're not based on the latest version. So that's what we see here, commit failed. And we get a bunch of other information about why the commit failed, but effectively, we need to update. So I'll click OK on those. I'll right click on my project. So righty up clicks, right clicks, goes to team, and then update. This is going to pull the changes down from the server and it updates us with the changes that Lefty applied, which is the second log message which we now have. We'll note here that we're now also at base version 55, which is what Lefty also had. So now, because I'm at the correct base version, <coughs> I can check in. So team commit, and I could type in my change again. I'll just select it here from the drop-down. It's got the previous messages, so you don't have to type in it if you have to do the same one again. And I'm going to try and ignore this guy, so I don't have to do it again. So click OK, and it transmits the change. Now you'll note that we didn't have to do any manual merging here. The changes were non-conflicting, so we could automatically apply them. So I will now update, no changes have been made in the local copy here, and so we now have the full changes on each of them. So that was a change in each file, but non-conflicting changes. So those are fairly easy to work around. Subversive is fairly com uh, competent at managing those sorts of changes. Now, of course, there are times when you end up with a serious problem. So let's do a couple things here. Let me add another thing. Let's add it. It says uh, third log message. And I'm going to change this one here. Uh, let's add another one. and. Let's put here yet another log message. So each developer is making a change in the same place at the same time without committing. And we can change it down here, for example. Let's imagine that Lefty decides to completely delete those two log messages, whereas Righty decides that he wants to, uh, let's just say he shortens them on create, because on create one and on create two. So we have a couple different changes here. They're conflicting changes. One guy's deleting, the other guy is updating. And up here, we each inserted new text. So I can save all files. Of course, that doesn't change anything to the repository now. I've got to commit. So let's imagine that righty, the second copy, checks in first. So I'll go down to team, commit. Of course, we have no problems here. So let's say uh, righty's changes. Normally I'd describe them, but no use at the moment. It's not going to be a commit problem, because we were based on the latest version, we've now committed. I could try and do a commit straight away here, but that's not actually going to do anything for me, because we saw it failed before. Normally I would like to update before committing, so I'll do that now. I'm going to update, and it's going to say one or more of the selected resources have unresolved conflicts. Go to the synchronization view and do a manual merge to resolve them. Click OK here, and we can see this, what looks like kind of garbage being inserted into my text. So what this is actually showing me is this is showing me that in this region here we have a merge conflict. This, uh, the greater than, less than, indicates a uh, patch, a uh, diff, between the two versions. Down here we got the same idea. We can see that mine happened to be empty, theirs happened to have this. Up here, mine had one change, theirs had the other. Now it was telling me that I could do a synchronization. And I can do that in a number of ways. I can right-click on the file. It's got a problem. We can see there's an X here on the icon. 
it's got a problem. I can right click, I can go to Team, and then there's a Synchronize with Repository. That'll do it one way. I'm going to show another way, which is we want to bring up the synchronization perspective. So I'll click on Add Perspective. I want to add the Team Synchronizing Perspective. And that pops up here. Now what I can do is, it's got the one file here from before. I can click here. I want to synchronize with my uh, system. This is important to do so that on the left it shows me all files that have problems. It's potential that it's quite possible you might have multiple files that have different conflicts. Uh, so this should have actually, you know, let's figure out why it didn't, this should have shown me, uh, let's do synchronize, synchronize SVN, I'm going to synchronize my entire workspace, and there we go. So for some reason it wasn't updating the workspace, it was just doing the one project, possibly from a previous configuration I had, and so now I forced it to do the entire project. So I can expand this to see all the problems. Double clicking on that is going to pop this up over here. I'll close my previous file that was sitting in the background which just had my changes. So let me expand this out. And we're going to see, now what's being shown here, this is my local file. And this is my remote file. As it happens, this ha is the way that I actually did the check-in with this being sort of righties commit, and here's lefties uh, update on the, uh, the local copy. So now we can see here that there's sort of the two sections where we had these changes that have been flagged, and we can go through and work on them. And up here we can see, I can click on one, I can double click on them, and it takes me to those changes. And it just sort of reduces the scope of what I'm seeing here. Now, this is the hard part. As the developer, I have to figure out what I want to do. So I can say, for example, quite often I can say, well, I want to uh, copy all non-conflicting. Let me just uh, move that over a little. Maybe we'll get some more of the text here. I can say, I want to copy all non-conflicting changes from right to left. Or I say, copy current change from right to left. So I'm currently selected one. Let's try this. So I'll try copying it from right to left. And we can now see, did that do what I actually wanted it to do? It took yet another change here. I can right click and I can say undo if I want to go back. I say, well, it didn't really do exactly what I wanted. What I can do is I can manually edit this. So let's imagine I wanted this to be the third, and then I want it to be the new one. So I can say I'll delete that. Delete all those in here, and that's now going to be one way of resolving it, just manually editing the file. It's just text. Feel free to edit it. I'll take the second change here, double-clicking it, and it shows me the problems I've got. Well, the remote person changed it, I deleted it. So I can do anything I like here. An easy way is I could just delete the, f the text if I wanted to get rid of it, um, or I could, for example, copy the current change from right to left, which will, I think if I select it, um, it will copy it across their change. Again, leaving a bit behind, I'll clean that up manually. So now that I've made those two changes, I've resolved those conflicts, I'll save the file. Now I can go here, and Eclipse doesn't yet know I fixed the problem. So I can right click, and I can say Mark is merged. Sometimes what you'll want to do is, rather than going through this whole merge problem, you could just say, for example, override an update, which says effectively, take everything on the server and use it as my current copy. If you happen to know that you had the better copy, maybe it's an image that you edited and your uh, teammate just happened to have changed some minor point on, you can say override and commit, which effectively takes yours. So overwrite theirs, taking just yours. So I'm going to say mark is merged, because I have merged the two files now. Expand my window back out. And we can see here now it no longer thinks there's a conflict. It hasn't yet done a commit, it simply has resolved the conflict. So I can right click on this, and I can either commit the single file, or what I'll show you is I'll go back to my Java view perspective. This was lefty, so I can right click on my entire project. And I'll get rid of the, and I'll go down to team and commit. So I'm going to say com, uh, merged log changes. And I'd probably describe what it's more than just simply the merge. So I've merged it back. Now 
and I can view the file. So here's my merged file. Again, we don't yet have the changes applied to the right because we haven't yet updated. So I'll go to the right profile and I will update. And it's going to pull in the changes here. We see all of the values come through. So that's how the brief uh, tour on how to do the merge. One more thing I wanted to demonstrate is how to check in uh, resources, perhaps, to your project that aren't necessarily part of building the project. What I mean here are usually documentation. So what I often do is create a doc folder. So right click on the project, and then I can say I want to create a new folder. I'll select where I want it, I'll put it in the first one, and I'm going to call it docs. And finish. So now I've got a docs folder with nothing in it. So I can, for example, right click, say I want a new file, it'll just be a text file here, and let's name it readme.txt. Now again, some SVN uh, repositories don't like handling files with spaces in them. Uh, if that's an issue for you, make sure you don't nest it with a space. So this is the readme file. Now I don't just have to have text files, I can put any type of file I like here. I happen to have a document that I've got uh, created. This happens to be an open office document, but you can use any type of document you like. I'm going to drag it in here. What I did is I drag and drop from my uh, file explorer in Windows, and I was just dropped it on top of the doc folder. It gives me the option of what I want to do. Do I want to link, which wouldn't copy the file, it would simply put a link into my project from wherever else I'm working on, or I can copy it in. I always like to copy it in so I know where the files actually are. So I'll copy the file across, and now I have a copy of that document. I can work with it here, I can check in, check out. Be warned that it's not necessarily going to merge well. So merging binary documents, like an OpenOffice or a Word document or an Excel or a Visio document, is a challenge. Um, they do have some tools to do so, but it's not necessarily going to be easy or well supported. So now that I've got those created here, I can right click on my project, go to Team, Commit, and I can say Added Some Documentation. OK, and it commits it into my project. Now when your team members update from your project, they will get the refreshed copy of these. Again, if they edit them and you edit them, all bets are off on how to actually fix that problem. Chances are you're going to have to manually merge somebody else's changes into your document, uh, and it can be a headache. OK, so what have we seen? Well, we've seen how to have two checkouts of the same project, but that was just to simulate two developers. We saw doing a basic change in one and reflecting it in the other. We saw doing a change in both of them that were non-conflicting and updating each other. And then we saw how to do a conflicting change and how to do a manual merge. We saw how we could actually edit the document directly or copy across non-conflicting changes. We marked it as merged and checked in. And finally, we looked at how we could use a doc folder or any other folder for that matter, to store other resources that are not necessarily part of our project, but that we might want to use. One hint on this doc folder is it's going to be ignored as we compile, so it's not going to confuse Eclipse for the build process. Alright, uh, thank you for watching.